In the beginning, a female doctor is hard at work, but then all of her colleagues start to believe she's going crazy. After she goes crazy and loses her job, her life goes downhill like Jack from the Jack and Jill story. She gets arrested and makes friends with a band of misfits. The band of misfits include the loud lady with the pink hair, the dangerous one who never took gun safety training, and the one who has a crush and is constantly flirting with a particular co-worker even though she has a boyfriend. But it's perfectly understandable seeing how in the beginning of the movie, her boyfriend left her hanging in her time of need. Two black SUVs pull up and the government has a meeting on whether or not to use the main characters as a line of defense against the worst scum of the universe. After the government makes their decision, all hell breaks loose basically. A researcher is possessed by a green demon which is horrible. But what's even more horrible is the demons in this movie spread like a virus. At the part when they're underground in the subway station, a demon appears and scares all the people in the scene. The monster almost gets hit by a speeding subway train, but is able to let the subway train go right through him. Later, the city is invaded by creatures. A cloud of smoke and a beacon light up the sky and the city is in mass hysteria. With the city being taken over by monsters, you want to know what the idiot military people do? They try to fight the monsters with guns. Guns barely work on rappers and they barely work on the bad guys here. Most of the military gets possessed and the last line of defense is the main characters. The main characters lose their vehicle and have to walk all the way over to the building where the vortex is. The characters do all this walking, all this walking, and not one single character is developed during those scenes. There is one scene though where they're making a toast and you get a heartfelt moment, but it's almost too late at that point. Anyways, later on there's a couple of scenes with super feminist and super misandrous undertones. I personally think it's possible to be pro-women without being anti-men. But it's like they're trying to say women are 15 times better than men or something. For example, the bosses in the film are women who bark orders down at their idiot male employees. And the main characters find it stupid to kill women and children, but they all think it's perfectly normal to kill men. I don't kill women or children. It's literally a kick to the balls, basically. You don't have the balls. The good guys grab their weapons and start shooting at the bad guys. They get to the master and the master sends a giant to destroy them. After that, they finally get to the green vortex in the ground. What about that nuclear thing on top of the car? A bomb is thrown into the portal and the good guys shoot the bomb and right before it crosses to the other side, go poosh. The puff of smoke over the building disappears and everything is back to normal. The character that was possessed isn't anymore. And before the credits, the two characters with the dyed hair hug it out. There's also a mid credit scene hinting at an upcoming sequel. Me personally, I think it's a terrible idea to suggest sequels until you see how your movie does at the box office. No, it's not. It's not terrible at all. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so. If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps>